continue to move forward thick and rent. fast. So Tony Butler gets us underway here at the sports ground. It's connect up against Munster. It is round Wait. nine of the oh. URC. And Blade puts boot the ball, but he finds Zebo, who just takes it through around 10 or 12 metres inside the connect half. So the start they wanted. Fair contest called there. Looked like it might have been a knock on. Chris Busby says we'll play it as we see it there. Okay, six, leave it now. Murray gets his hands on the ball. And stumped forward by Lockman. So early chances here with the ball in hand for Munster. Murray looks to his right as he hands it on to Frisch. All been solid so far. Conning's defence has been a concern. Munster are very good at making sure they run through those phases and score after they've played through seven or eight phases. So they're consistent with the ball in hand. They have patience. And they will try and test this conic defence as it's flicked on out through the hands of Zebo. Out wide to that far side to Tom Ahern, who's scooting down that far line, and it is going to be a penalty first up. And at that point, I'll introduce Bernard Jackman, who's with me in commentary. Yeah, really patient attack from from Munster. I think they got caught playing one or two pass plays, and Connacht looked really, really composed and and, and organised defensively. And it's just then when they brought Zebo into the into the play down the 50 metre channel and got Tom Ahern away on the right hand side. Once they got dented, Connacht then panicked at that breakdown, and, and that'll be really frustrating for Scott Fardy, who's the new On defensive the coach here. They have conceded some very soft tries, and um, even up against Ulster, they, they weren't as good defensively as they need to be, and today's a big game for them. They see the pro to try and shut down Munster. Well, Munster are eighth heading into this contest, Connacht are tenth, and that's six points separating fourth and eleven, such as the uh, state of play in the URC. You can see the rain tumbling down and connect a pinch one there against the throw. So they managed to make up for that mistake and it'll be they who uh, look to spread the ball wide early on in their 22. Ford who takes the ball to ground there. Use it. His blade looks around for runners. Very slow ball. So they just try and ship it forward. There isn't... A huge wind to talk about here at the sports ground. It's a little bit blustery, but... You can see the umbrellas up there in the background with the fans. It's, ch it's charged down there. This is going to be a try. Is it first up? It is going to be a try. He's picked it up. He's put it down. It is a try for Gavin Coombs. Oh, that's brilliant by Munster. Lost the line out originally, and they'll probably need to look at, at that because that was a big area of weakness for them. But putting pressure on the defensive rooks. Connor just trying to organise to clear with Caelan Blade, his right foot, but it looks like Coombs is timed his, his block down perfectly and, and just gets a kind bounce as well you just see him here probably Caelan Blade needs a blocker on that side just to give him a little bit more protection but Coombs who was due to play at eight but has pushed into the second row like he did last week against Leinster gets he him off the board early well he went very close and I'll tell you there he might well have put his knee on that touchline if he did just put his hands on the ball and force it with downward pressure and he has put that knee over that dead ball line, so it won't be a try. Now, if he'd have downed it with downward pressure, it would have been a try there. He picked okay, it up, so he put it down, and it looks to me like his okay, right leg has gone answer. over the dead ball line. We'll just listen to TMO now, but a really unusual technique. It looked like it was easier just to dive from where he was, but it seems as if he tried to go past the ball. Just see it here again. You can just tap it down easy there. He's, he's blown out, hasn't yeah, he? Marco, yeah. Okay, are you seeing that, Chris? Yeah, so he's in possession. The ball's off the ground, so he is in possession. And then he's clearly on the ground, so it's going to be a goal line drop by, correct? Agreed. I think the, the coaching Still term trying. is he's butchered that. That was an easier score than that. He did the hard part getting the block down, timing his, his offside line, but just wait for wow, he just made it, that, yeah. made it so just complicated. It, yeah. Well, I said at the time that he picked the ball up and put it down, and I thought he knew exactly what he was doing because he was much closer than I am a good distance away, but you mentioned it. The try has been Sorry, butchered. Jack, Graham yeah. Roundtree guys, yeah. won't be too happy with that one. So it comes out to the 22 by red, mid for red. the Dead restart. And we'll get playing again. That is a huge let off for the home side. It went deathly silent when Coombs him. had scored there, or what looked like it had been a try, and Connacht 
have been given a reprieve straight away as they get started again through Hanrahan. It's well taken down there by the left winger Shane Daly. So Munster, all the match so far in this opening five minutes or so has been spent in the connect end of the pitch. And Munster just keeping ball in hand and running through those phases. Well, the synthetic pitch is made for days like this. And it's made for a conic penalty. Just the penalty and left him off the ground. Yeah, good defensive set from, from Connor. You can see Munster trying to play a lot off 10. Young 10, Tony Butler, just playing a short passes, but it's a two man tackle here. And just on the clean out, it's just Tony Butler's the one who actually lifts Caelan Blade out from, a, from yeah, an offside submission. And again, you know, you just see it seems the wind has, has affected that kick from Hanrahan. But this is an area that both teams have, have struggled when sure. when they've kicked down the line. Their line hasn't been anywhere near as secure as as they would like. And you can understand from Munster's point of view, there have been so many disruptions. They're down to, you know, their, okay, their fifth choice hooker happen. Scott Buckley playing today. But from a Connor point of view, you'd expect him to be quite settled in this position. Yeah, Owen Clark was supposed to start this game. He withdrew beforehand, so Buckley comes in as the starting number two. It's Connick who take the ball off the top and form the ball on the Munster 22. Blade, who's running things at the back there, just waiting to get his ball in hand. Connick to making good progression with his maul. Ball's passed off, and they take on a couple more metres, but it's going to be a penalty. Number one on the ball, we've seen him first. And then holding on. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange, a strange option from from Connor there. The more was moving first, forward, first and clear left the ball. because they put so many players to it. A lot of teams were going nine to twelve there just to get some some more players around the ball. But Connor played a short pass to Bolton, who's very physical, but it was just so close to the to the mall that once they were able to get after that. And uh, you can, when you've got someone like Bundyaki or Carl Ford, who are big men in the centre, just shift that point of contact. And, you know, because yeah. they're they're going to be able to get into Tony Butler, even get into Scanlon, who's not a, not a huge man, and, and get you over the game line. We can see that flag of Andy Brace on the far side. There, it was just wafting every now and then towards right till left. So it's in favour of Munster in the first half, but it is more of a swirling breeze here at the sports ground, as you would expect. It is on most occasions. This time, Munster have taken their own liner. Only just there, Coombs at the back but they uh, look to shift it wide straight away, and they're doing just that. They've broken through in midfield, and they're Murray gets there nice. and passes the ball on to Jack O'Donoghue, who makes another three or four metres. It just comes to a slowdown there, as Munster at one point looked like they were going to really break through that conic line. Zebo though, does just that and tries to get one away, and he gets it into the hands of Murray, though, who has knocked the ball on, and it's Bundiaki now who picks the ball up. But they knock on advantage being played, and Prendergast now rips through the middle. He's got Blade on his inside. He doesn't see him. He overruns him. He runs around the back of him, and Cam Prendergast maybe blew an opportunity there to put Kalen Blade away. Joe Joyce gets it out the back there in place of Blade. It's in. It's, it's Connick to have the ball now, around 25 metres out from the Munster line, through the hands of Hanrahan to Bealham. You put it back. Five put him back. They move it out wide, but there's not really much happening out in that far side as Frisch makes the tackle there on Shane Bolton. And Blade just tries to snipe through the middle. He gets under a tackle. He gets through one. And the scrum half is on the ground. Off his feet in the impact. So Hansen oh steps in to do the honours. It's slowed right down. Bealham again. They lose a good seven or eight metres there. No, it's in. Use it! Well, Blade is holding his head there as he comes back. You just sense, though, that Connick need to come Way away with time. something down here just for their own confidence. But Munster holds Stern. Okay. Butler out the back through Hanrahan to Hansen to Daly, back to Hansen. Hansen looks for Aki and Anton Frisch gets in the and he takes it back inside. It bounces off the head 
of iconic player and heads out okay. over the touchline. But we've got a bit injury, of a yeah. break for an injury by the looks of things. Off, yeah, I think we're going to have plenty of entertainment from the two, the two 15s. Both Zebo and Mac Hansen have only had a couple of touches each, but both times they've made things happen, getting their hands yeah, free in hand contact. Off. And in fairness, that was a it's really important right. defensive read from Anton Frisch there because Connacht were, were getting away. That's the break from Prendergast straight in the middle but just here see he gets two touches on it and just there Frisch is just getting back into the passing channel when Bundy Aki probably would have been very hard to stop and on the other side of things Mac Hansen as well and as, as Ebo on the other hand side he made a little half break that actually led to a turnover from Conor Murray which is the rook that Keane Prendergast picked and went through and I think in conditions like this you've seen when teams play off yeah, 10 no, nice, that nice, the nice. line speed is so big that there will be little gaps through the rook or very much around the rook which Blade has also tried to, to target. Where do you see Mac Hansen as a better player at fullback or on the wing? Look I think at international level when you've got someone like Hugo Keenan from no, an Irish point back. of view he's probably not going to displace him he's probably he obviously has an amazing That's X like factor but he's probably too erratic Big compared guys? to Keenan. Keenan just does, doesn't make mistakes no whereas on the, on the so on the wing for Ireland but yeah, for Connacht yeah, I just think okay. having more to touches know. having two sides to attack the line out, okay. he's probably going to play more rugby for me as fullback and it's probably more value to Connacht rather than being Connor, lost a little bit on the wing outside yeah well there's quite a break after these fixtures over the uh, next day or so because we have a week off and then we head back into okay. the European it's competitions and then here. We use our plans after that it's around the 20th of okay. February that we head back yeah. to the URC due the to the Six Nations break yeah, as well so okay. there's a lot to be, be made fast. out of this game today with Just four possibly decision, five that's... points on the line and, and so many teams around that four point mark and Connacht in 10th position, Munster in 8th, the champions wanted to get themselves back up there, but they did win it from 5th position last year. Yeah, look at Munster are, um, you know, they've been there before, uh, and they'll they'll back themselves yeah, to, to make a late there, run yeah. So I don't, and I think they realise, look, they've got 13 players Super unavailable for today you know, we already spoke yeah, about the hooker, down the three senior yeah, hookers, yeah. and the guy they brought in to, to give them a little bit of cover, it's nearly unheard of in one position Connacht though they probably need to get a win here it's it's always difficult you know for the for for Connacht playing against teams who are better funded which are the three other Irish provinces but just on the back of that last minute defeat to Leinster okay, we'll their form has been quite erratic we'll since Bordeaux, Bordeaux at home Saracens away Ulster wasn't the too the bad yet. but still they, they, they didn't get the it's win so I think today is a really important game for Connacht and to get back into the top eight uh, as they go into this break it'll be huge Okay, he's on. Yeah, what is huge is that loss there for Connick Carl Ford. Okay, he's had to come from the pitch. He's already getting treatment okay, to the head. Outside. I think it might be for a, a, a look at a possible concussion Bell, there. So told you that the line was outside. He's been so hooker, replaced AR. by Jack Open Carty, gap, who screen. comes on. It's outside. Thank you. Time on. So you would expect that perhaps Hanrahan might move further out and Carty might move into 10. Yeah, that's the risk of going 6 2 if you lose a back area. Right. Now, hopefully, it's, it's just a HIA and he, he passed it. But you can see more pressure on that once they line out, but they managed the to get possession. So he managed to have the ball 20 metres out from their okay, just leave it now. own line. And since they uh, came up with that miss through Gavin clear. Coombs, it has been predominantly ball. down in the Munster end of the field. But they've had a chance now to relieve that pressure. If you have just joined us, Gavin Coombs did score a try. And unfortunately for him, though, by picking the ball up and putting it down, put his leg across the dead ball line, meaning that the Connick team restarted with a 22 dropout and no score was forthcoming from that charge down but almost stolen again then from Connacht but Munster managed to hold on that's an area of concern for Graham Roundtree early in this contest they lost one earlier they almost lost another one and then almost another one just then so a bit of work to be nice done idea. on that Munster line out with around 10 minutes played three times more tackles being made by Connick thus far in this contest that tells you a story in itself almost a charge down there from Jared Butler but it flips back into the hands of Munster. And they restart and go again down that short side through Lockman. No three, no, you're Ollie Yeager, who made his debut against okay, Leinster on right St. Stephen's Day. Of course, he's played for the Crusaders in Super Rugby. Bit of experience there for Graham Roundtree to call on. Ball left it. Jagger's are hurt. Jagger's got a head knock. I thought he got a okay, heavy. Time off. Just stop him for injury. Okay, just leave him. Yeah, the way he presented that ball, it looked like Thanks, he, guys, he was out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Really good work by the Connor players there. They realised he was in danger and just notified the referee. Well, that's a concern, isn't it? Because he hasn't moved. 
Sorry, Tag, I didn't and they've see already had so many injury yeah. issues, especially last week. They yeah, lost no three, problem. four players Number last three, week. Yeah. They've got around 17 players, Munster, on their injury list. Yeah. So this is a huge loss. Yeah, it's just a double hit from Finney Bielham and Joe Joyce. And you see yeah. from the, let's see if their head contact here was a more whiplash. Yeah, so just see it on the screen. All the players are low. He's committed to making a legal tackle there. So there's no fault yet. Great. So it's just going to be a scrum where you start to monster in possession. Well, sometimes these things happen, Bernard. It's a physical contact sport. Yeah. We both know it. It's happened. It, it does happen. Sometimes injuries are unavoidable. Yeah, so the way he carries the ball, he, he carries the ball very square with his head head quite low. And it looked like Joyce and Bielham both kind of hit him around the shoulder area. Uh, but it's just going to be over here. The impact of it. see where the hatch is in between the 5 and the 15. This isn't the referee okay. there, but I doubt he's going to search us on already, so it looks... We had a look at the tackle. There's clearly no foul play. I wonder whether when the two of them came in, one from one from side, one from the other, hitting the, the shoulder right. of Jaeger that almost pushed his head together in that particular tackle. Yeah, it's very... Uh, it's, it's Unless you have an angle from, from front just, on or behind, which it only we are. I think it's just one of those things that can can happen, and obviously... He, he's a, he will be a big blow to, to Munster. I think he's come in there last weekend, scrummaged very well, had a really interesting battle with, with Andrew Porter. It's not a penalty, lads. It's going to be where you had the ball, so it's just in between the Vast five experience from his time at, at the Crusaders. Yeah, I think he's got five Super Rugby titles. Irish qualified, obviously, came came through the school system in Newbridge and, and Black Rock. And, um, yeah, he, another blow for Ray Marantz. As you said, we last week, we you know, they lost the coin and, and Barron early in the first half, which really affected their impact off the off the bench against Leinster and this is another injury, you send injury from now. Lads when you're ready, Bracey, if he wants to come on. Well, there's been talk about whether they can bring in medical jokers in the next month and they may be now forced into a position, Munster, where they do have to do something like that. Of course, they lost to Dogbu last week, of course, with that Achilles injury as well. So they've, they're missing so many players across key positions in their forward pack that they may be forced to actually bring players in then they've had those changes that happened before the game here today with their squad yeah, changing around predominantly up front. So big changes, big problems for the champions, and yeah. they're going to have a lot to deal with here. Gav, We're still Gav, 70 minutes remaining in this match. There? Don't go to the yeah, I look, at, I, I think on that jack, it's a little bit really different in the top 14, a medical yeah, joker. Yeah, you're, you're, you start your season with a fixed number of players yeah, and you can only replace the player who's injured. Effectively, there's an open there's an open policy. You can bring players any time into URC. Challenges financially, you know, will the RFU, will the Munster branch be able to to give Graham Rowntree the 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 budget to go out and get somebody short term? There is a lot of players out there desperate for chances, particularly at a province like Munster, who would who would come at a drop of a hat to, to try and I suppose get a more longer term contract. But really, you, you know, you'd wonder, you'd worry for for Munster now with uh, you know if they're not going to get bodies back over the next couple of weeks. Um, obviously, there's a bit of a gap in the in the URC, but this this is the one here, yeah. So there is a bit of head contact there. It's just that's the angle we probably need to look. But I think it's more a compression issue, as you said. You know, um, there's no head on, there's no shoulder on head from what it looked like there. But certainly, he seemed to get a squeeze from both sides. If, if that's even it. It was like a vice-like effect, yes, wasn't it, with it was. the, the two players coming in there, completely accidental, just trying to make the tackle down low, wrapping with their arms. But unfortunately for Oli Jaeger he's the man who's just sandwiched in the middle of it there so will be with a very good care there as he comes off the crowd giving him a wonderful round of applause as he moves off the field now in this situation Bernard when they've had such a break how can this affect one team and the other I look at you've seen both well both teams have been you know, moving, warming up. Yeah, to look yeah, at, right. there hasn't been any big yeah, moment in the game yet. Obviously, the Coombs, the Coombs non-try. You know, wasn't after a big Sorry, period of pressure. And, and I think both teams now, the, the coach will be getting word on through the water carriers and just trying to trying to say to them where they see the spaces, where they see the opportunities. He's clearly trying to make a legal battle, or legal tackle. He's fully bent at the hips. For us, we don't see fault in the tackle. Either. There's no fault left for us. Well, I have had a look at it. Yeah, we have. Yeah. And there's a, there's an attempt to make a legal tackle too. There is a wrap. Yeah. Well, I think that explains the situation quite nicely from Chris okay, Busby. One. Okay, really slow behind the set. Okay, don't overlay. So Graham Roundtree, on, as you saw in the middle of that shot just there, a moment or two ago, the head coach of Munster has some thinking to do. Crouch! Bye. Early concussion injuries for both teams. Jaeger off. He won't be returning. And 
kind of forward also. Yeah, just in terms of the, 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 the tactical shift that okay. Connors have made yeah. while um, while they get that HIA done. JJ Hannon's actually gone to, to fullback. Jack Harty's gone to ten. Mark Hans has gone to the right wing, and they moved um, Byron Ralston into into centre. So they've made <laughs> nearly everybody's out of position except Caden Blade. But look, we'll wait and see how Carl Ford gets on. So in other words, you can just throw the numbers up in the air and bring them down. And they are where they land, but as it is, we are about to get back underway. So 11 minutes play. We've had a quite a lengthy stoppage there for the Oliega injury, but we are back into the contest with Connor Murray putting the ball into the scrum, and it's Munster with the ball, putting it downfield. It's Hansen who calls the mark. OK, back there, please. Yeah, that's a great bit of coverage from, from Mac Hansen. Yep. Just said he's now yep. on the wing, Keep but going, please. Keep because going, of the way yeah. Munster Keep ran going. that back play, he had yep. to come up very flat, and obviously when you've got someone with the left foot that Rory Scanlon has, there is that space no, in behind, no, he but he, he just covered it perfectly, and he knew there was no point of counter-attacking there. This is, as he gets a lucky bounce there as well to back it off, but he was happy to take the mark and just get a bit of field position. Well, that shows you that wind as well. Now, it's not a hugely strong wind, but it swirls, and you just watch the ball, it just dips at the last minute when Hansen thinks it's going to go out, it hits the ground, it goes off at a right angle and heads out, so Connick do get some possession and it does go to the throw-out for Munster because that was a free kick. But it didn't become a broken play situation, which would have hindered the home team somewhat. So the ball goes in from Buckley, and the ball comes back on the Connick side again. So further issues at the line-out for Munster, knee, please, and further issues discipline-wise as well. So on the knees, not getting up to the feet, and Connick pick up a penalty on yeah. the halfway Look, line. I, I feel sorry for Scott Buckley because Number four on his knee. he's up against what Support over the last the couple of years has been statistically the best defensive line-out. Obviously, conditions are poor, and, you know, Gavin Coombs isn't a natural line-out jumper as well, so, um, you know, I think they just probably need to shorten the line-out. Obviously, Mike okay. Prendergast, the attack coach, will want more full line-out so they have more space, but I think, you know, the the away from the home, ball. possession is absolutely key here, here and yeah. just try and find a way to win it. Well, the roles are reversed this time. It's Connick with the line out and the throw through Dave Heffernan. They find their jumper More! with no issues at all. As Butler takes it out the back and gives it off to Blade into the hands of Carty, and then Bundy Ake charges into them, as you would expect. Connick keep moving to the left, but Carty decides he's going to put one up in the air. And the wind has certainly helped back to come back. You heard the referee there. Back off green, side. so play on. Hold green. One thing about a synthetic surface Just as well, the ball does roll end over end more when it's got the wind behind it. It's outside. Step four. And that it's may be a problem. Yeah. It is. Yeah, that's, the, that's the challenge for the end. Your focus on finding grass straight down the middle. The space was there, but just a mistake for young Tony Butler. It doesn't get any luck with the bounce. And Connor to come all the way back down the field. But good idea from Cardi to put that ball up in the air. They did force the, the they got pressure in the air, but obviously the ball bounced back into, into Antoine Frisch's hands and he, he found space down to the right hand side. But tough for Butler, like it's a big ass for him. Um, obviously you've got some injuries there, Joey Carby's out. Jack Crowley I think has been is in rest as part of the international player welfare and uh, you know but he has Rory Scandal outside him, Connor Murray inside him, both excellent kickers of the ball and you know he really needs to let them take on some of the game management aspects. There's almost a case to put the ball towards the sideline a little bit when you're doing the kicks in these type of conditions as well because you just take out that win situation. 100%. Bind! Set! And nine. Use it! So Connick with the ball, straight into the hands of Bundiaki in the middle there, who slams in through there, 25 metres out, and they look to move forward again. And Connick to not renowned for scoring early in phases. It takes him a good few to really set themselves up. Don't have anything in. And that's exactly what they're doing at the moment. We're in the fourth phase already. They're just yeah. bashing the ball from one side to another at the moment. And well, they must have thought they had their hands on the ball through John Ryan. But in the end, 
It wasn't to be. Yeah, I think it was against number four, Gavin Coombs, side. to be fair. It was number four. Yeah, so John, this is John Ryan, but on the other side, you can just see it's Gavin Coombs is just lying there. He puts his head up there now. Referee feels that he's interfered with the with the ball presentation, and straight away, J.J. Hanron says, I'll take, take a shot. If it's clear, they oh, listen, he jumps in. Okay. Okay. So we, we don't have five player, though. Okay. Yeah. I know, sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe Joyce with his West, West Country accent from, from Bristol. A great recruit for Connor this year. Uh, he's Irish qualified, obviously spent a lot of time in the, playing the Premiership and um, has given him a bit of steel. He's a good ball carrier. And he, he's just, something happened off the ball with himself and Ty Byrne. He feels Ty Byrne maybe made a bit of a, a, a meal out of, out of a clear out, but we haven't had another look at it. But this is, should be an easy three points for, for JJ. He was directly in front, 22 metres out, and he does make it easy pickings. So Hanrahan with the first points of the game for Connacht, and they lead by three points to nil with 17 minutes played. Butler gets us back underway. And we're back to right where we were at the beginning as Connacht put the ball down. And that was Carty having a little look ahead of himself there to see perhaps what was coming. Yeah, he does just that, takes his eyes off the ball and puts it down in a perilous position for his team. Yeah, that's a big error just after having scored. Just want to get a nice clean exit there, get back down the field. But the, both, or the three scrums we've had have been rock solid. Both teams have been able to launch off it. John Ryan's come in and there's been no messing around. So it'll be interesting to see what Munster can pull in this terms of back play. They're stacking Tony Butler and Shane Daly right behind the scrum. And then you've got Zebo and Scannell. But it looks like to be a, a late sweep, probably back the open side. Right. Well, you want to control, control possession after you just score points, and that's always the key aspect. The Munster have been given a nice play behind the ball. Free hit here. Use it! Ball is lifted. Well, they put it to ground and it does go backwards. Referee Chris Busby almost gets himself knocked over for the uh, ball coming through then. And Coombs takes it in. The man who should have had a try. Within the first five minutes of this game. Back for me. So Connick hold on. As Munster batter at their line just inside the 22 Harder metre mark. Right. As they move to the right, it's Frisch there who just gets through a tackle and then goes again. Hold here. Doesn't get any further though. Release. Jeremy Lockman drives on. And in again, Munster go. A lot of chatter in there around those rucks as Buckley gets almost driven backwards. He manages to present it nicely though. And the ball's been put down by Munster. Well, there's a bit of afters there as well. Yeah, there's a little bit of afters there. I think maybe Ralston had a little word with Rory Scanlon after he knocked that on. But you see here, just trying to play that short ball and he'd lost it, he'd lost it before the hit. But just Hey, that's we're just going to start, guys. The carry here again, it's just... In fairness, Munster hadn't really manipulated or shortened the Connacht defensive line. They're struggling to trap Connacht players into breakdowns. I've got to come this side and have a look again. Yeah. I think both teams are actually struggling. They're, they're just going from one yeah, side to, to the other around the ruck area looking here, for yeah, someone yeah. to be sloppy in defence. Yeah, it's, it's highly attritional, but the problem is because okay. of, the, of the conditions, the defensive teams yeah, aren't nice really... Man believing that okay, they're going to play the ball out the back so they're very focused on the front door option and they're getting good two-man hits but then said neither team are able to trap those tacklers in the breakdown so the next phase there's still a full full line in front of you and probably neither of them have that one big power athlete someone like a, a jasper visa who's just going to run over people monster must be wondering what they've done so wrong to bring the weather with them ahead against leinster as well down at Thurman park same balance on st stevens day they've got it again up here in Galway at the sports ground. Right. Perhaps not as much wind as there was Five. at Thurman Park, but Set. still what they call in these parts of the world a dirty day. 
Can use it. Okay, stay great. So that is not the greatest of kicks. Yeah, but that makes no sense for me. You've got JJ Hanner and you've got Jack Carty um, on your team. You've you basically got two tens. You've got Bundy Aki who can just get you over the gain line and open up the angle. And you go back into Straight Mac Hansen, on. who's got no angle. I know he sliced the kick, but he's never going to get big distance there. It's really, really poor shot selection. You know, if, you, if he's a left footer on the other side, you say fair enough. But too easy and kind of deserved to concede here based on the stupidity of that it's, it's fine. decision. It's fine. As we saw just a moment or two ago when Hansen kicked, he didn't get much distance anyway okay. because of that swirling Come breeze. On. So Munster take the ball Hold and on. they form a more One stop! Connick defending it well at the moment. Okay, back so right it comes out the back. And then, is it half a chance there? No, Staley tries to go through but as I said there's plenty of chatting there around that ruck area in this match plenty of feeling in this game Munster they went the 80 minutes against Leinster with only three points they're yet to score anything here this may be their first three points though because they've been given a penalty exactly the same as the one right in front of the post around 10 or 12 meters out yeah but once you can't tackle if he's in the wrong side once again, exactly it's not, the same as the one down there. It's not the jackler, he's, he's picking up. Jackler's good, tackler must throw. Shot. Yeah, he's picking up Jared Shot Butler up. there, who effectively, just for a second, hinders Conor Murray's chance of making the clean out. I think Finney Bealham, you know, if he doesn't, if he's only football focused, he, he's totally legal there, but it's what's happened in front of him. Um, it, it was well picked up by the referee, Chris Busby, and you'd imagine this will be an easy, easy three points. But, I mean, it just comes down. Just a it, com number, yeah. it comes down to not being able to catch the kickoff. So an individual error from Jack Carty, and then, you know, poor, poor exit strategy from from Connacht has effectively given Munster this chance. Well, you did say it a moment or two ago that they almost deserve to be punished because of the fact they put in such a bad kick. So they are going to be punished here. Four from six from the kicking tee so far this season for Tony Butler, just his second senior start for Munster. And he does put it across, so we are all level here with uh, 22 and a half minutes played. It's Connick three and Munster three. You going right, JJ, are you? You going right or left? So the rain still hasn't abated. Well, that one there has gone the 10 metres and then just flicked back off a Munster player. So, Caelan Blade through Connacht has managed to get the ball back in hand. So, that kickoff there working very nicely indeed. And pushing himself forward is Peter Dooley, the 29 year old former Ireland under 20 player. 10 metres inside that. Fine ball lifted, players onside. Munster ending the field. There was no problem with that because the ball was in his hands. Michael and Blade, so you heard the referee there, said no problem at all, the ball was lifted. Go tight. No, no tight. Tight. Go. Well, Cardi gets the ball out of the hands of Ralston, and I suspect there may be a word or two in Ralston's ear from the Munster players. Okay, that's forward. Especially Rory Scanlon after what three. happened down the other end of the field. Yeah, that's an unforced error, really. There was just a little pocket of space. You see Connor yep. trying to... Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Caelan Blade saying his hands are on the ball, but I it wasn't agree, lifted. The lifted. Just be careful, you get the timing right, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so you tie burn over. He got there too quickly that time, but, you know, this is the. That's just after the first knock on. You know, at first, that's where Munster need to be a little bit better. Get that ball to a little bit of width, get it two passes, see how Connacht are organised defensively. But make sure it's out of the rock. Obviously, you haven't been that's on attack. Thing, yeah. It hasn't been one of those games either where there's been a, an advantage being played for, for a penalty. So both teams haven't really had that free play where they've been able to look one and two passes wide. Please. Exactly. But that's probably where the space is going to be, to be honest, given the conditions. It's so hard to do anything first phase attack. I guess it's trusting yourself in that position to be able to hold onto the ball and put your players in the position to be able to get through those gaps. Yeah, on turnovers, you really want your 15 or your winger to communicate in where the space is and then be able to put a little bit of pace on it. Okay, just hold here. Well, they've oh, used the kicking game again. This one has gone more towards that uh, sideline. That one looks like a really nice yeah, one indeed. 
That's a brilliant kick from you. No, he can't go quick. He can't go quick. Tony Butler. He can't go quick. It's touched by. It's a wonderful kick. It's a 50-22. He's absolutely nailed that one. Now we spoke a moment or two ago, didn't we, about making sure you didn't kick it towards the end and put it wall towards the sideline with this wind. There's a classic example of it. Now if he puts that straight down the middle, it goes over the dead ball line. Yeah, that's a real confidence booster for him. That'll help him settle into the game. He's got a couple of little errors which is understandable, but that's massive. And if Munster can okay, two get a small right going, it was a big part of their game last year. Obviously, they're, they're seven or eight metres out, but if they can get the first part right, catch and it, you, might, you fancy the score from here. Well, the line has been their problem, hasn't it, so far in this game? And Scott Buckley, you saw him there wiping the ball down to try and get it as dry as possible. And this time, it, it has worked, but... It's clearly not straight, fellas. I understand the conditions, clearly not straight. You yeah. Scrum or line out. I thought the one over the, on the far side here was uh, was not straight as well, but that was towards the front, and Chris Busby, the referee, was happy to let Kaelin, it go. But when you go to the back, it's just so obvious, and we we'll just get another look at it. Look, fair yeah, good pressure in the air from, from Connacht, but they couldn't get across. You see here from the middle, referee's got a great angle. Just, it actually starts off very, very crooked from that angle. Yeah, it went straight down. We saw from that replay there, straight down, that it went crooked from the beginning. Oh, and we're going to have a scrum. I'll no doubt about that whatsoever. Square, OK. Don't set up in the back. I want to square. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But then, then you start square as well. Okay, well, there's yeah. been a lot of chat in this game. I'd call it good chat because it's been very manly towards the referee, but there's been a lot of chat asking Chris Busby about certain things. Just trying to let the referee know that the captains are there. And it's Connick now who are. Fine! Perhaps going to have to try something Set. different to the last time they were in this position to try and kick the ball out. Maybe do what Bernard Jackman said and look at using Bundiaki. They've used Jared Butler instead off the back of the scrum. That's a rock, no hard slow, Ken. Yeah, the problem is we're going back to Jack Kirk here. And he's been charged down and it's been knocked forward and this could be a try to Munster. They have the ball in hand, hard to try and work out who's got it in there, but they do have the ball. Twice now they've tried to go to the back and get rid of it and twice it hasn't worked for them. So it's Munster who have the ball in hand through Tom Ahern. They move the ball forward again. It's Coombs who thought he'd come up with a try earlier on. Lockman now barges into them. They're around seven metres out from the conic line. Forward they move again. Ahern again. He's picked up five tries this season. He's looking for more. As a monster, as a team. It's there, no, let it come. Let the ball come. Well, they've got He's the scrum put in. Pulled down. Well done, Ronnie. Okay, red goal four, just a scrum. Yeah, well to get another shot at the Legal contest is going to be pulled down. The exits. Can't get out. So I, I knew that was going to happen because they went back to Jack Carty, who's a right footer. And look at it, like he's no chance of getting that ball across. They need to go one more phase around the corner so Jack can kick towards this stand, if you, if you get me. It's just kicking against the grain there. Great pressure from Tom O'Hearn and Connacht are blessed not to concede directly there. You know, there are all kinds of bother, tacker tight in the scrum. And fairness, you just saw probably Munster be very frustrated with their lack of power there. That was a great opportunity just to get over the game line. And, and in fairness, Connacht looked well able to muscle up to it. Yeah, wonderful charge down from uh, Tom Ahern. I, I actually thought there that Coombs might be able to out jump Cardi and just get both hands to the ball, but it wasn't to be. But I know exactly what you're saying with the Cardi kick. Instead of going to his forehand side, he's going to his backhand side if we're using tennis parlance, and it just isn't working out for them. But that's twice now. First of all, through Hansen. Then through Carty, they've had kicks under all sorts of pressure and put them into bad positions. They're going to have to change that way of thinking. There's only 11 minutes or so until half time. They will have the breeze with them in the second half, the home team, but they have to do better just when they've got the ball in hand, trying to get into that breeze and get down the other end of the field. Munster have been good value for their pressure. They've been putting on the kickers as well. Okay, it's not easy for Connacht, they don't have a left footer, but they can certainly do better than that. So Connor Murray will have to put in... Crutch! Five metres out from the Connacht line. And Cam Munster... Finally, break that duck and get across the try line. And the scrum has moved. Just across, just across, let's go again. Joe Joyce was getting excited. 
but you heard the referee saying just across, Chris Busby. It's a little bit both ways, fellas. Okay, I've got to get it straight or go for it. Okay. They've got a bit of a shove this side, you came this way as well, okay? Just square, go for it. You can hear all the propaganda side, yeah. in the, the sideline. Well done, Finley. Brilliant, brilliant pitcher, mate. I don't know if it was a brilliant pitcher for, for anybody. It was very messy. And in fairness to Busby, he, he wants to be, he's not guessing here. He wants to be 100% sure, so he gives a reset. But if there's a lot of movement this time, he's going to have to make a decision. Well, you answered your own question there, when you said propaganda, because that's exactly what it was. If they didn't think it was going to be that particular way, they're trying to talk the referee into it. So take two. Fine. Set. Steady. And nine. Nine. Leave him. This one's much better. And they get the ball off the back of the scrum. There's Jack O'Donoghue, who is racing into those Connacht opponents. It's a red arm slaughter. The ball's there. So forward again they go. It's Murray who's directing traffic at the back there, but everything's very tight, Tackle! very close no in. Green. Butler's been told to get out. He does just that. And I've Coombs, an and a penalty Number advantage three. for an offside coming. So a guaranteed three advantage. points, you would think, advantage. for Munster. Now here comes the interesting part, That's when they had the ball. advantage. Offside. Nothing happening, so they've gone back for Number the offside. Three, set up offside. Yeah, and Ty Burns Number three. straight away Here's says, Paul, so he knows it's going to be a low-scoring game. You want a shot? And they haven't shown that they have the, the, yeah. the power to, to muscle their way over from here. I, I think if I was Graham Rancher, I'd be saying, three, once we outside, get yeah. close to the post there, even if it's five yards out, go into our pick-and-go oh, game, really because no, the one-out game, the pass from nine, is just giving Connor too much time to get off the off the line and make those hits. And we saw Bundy Aki come in and make a big hit there as well. No, we didn't have it on field. Yeah, a tight game is the uh, definite way of this one. Just over 30 minutes played. Three all, possibly 6-3 to Munster in a moment or two's time. But there's a habit of games being played at this venue around this time of the year and they're low scoring affairs. This yeah. one is heading the same way. I'll try and place them back as well. Well, the kick goes over, and that shot there gives you an idea of the rain here in Galway. It's now a 6-3 lead to the Munster men. And Graham Roundtree there in the middle of shot. I suspect, given what's happened losing one of his front rowers early on as well, that he's probably happy with this position being 6-3 up. They are going to be Inside. into that window in the second half as Connick get things back underway. Back by Green. Play on. It was not back originally, but it is first going to be a penalty for state. Munster. It's back by Green and his first arrival. Yeah, good turnover. Here, good turnover by Jack O'Donoghue. He he spotted that Munster that the ball was just slightly feet, first open, and an opportunity came in there for him, and he, he get in over it. But Munster won't be happy with that kickoff as well. I mean, they just didn't get Thomas Hearn up in the air, and that could have been more damaging for them if they hadn't have managed to find an opportunity to rook, but I think they've missed touch here. Okay. Yeah, Butler knew as soon as he kicked that then that that hadn't gone out, but there's another one of those kicks from Hanson which has come off the side of his boot, so he hasn't made any in the end. It's actually worked out well for Munster. Yeah, it's, it's probably exactly where Tony Butler would have been hoping to have the line out. The wind isn't as strong as, as it looks when you look at Mac so Hansen's he kicks. He's just he's just not connecting with the, the, with the ball at all. In fairness, once they're getting someone in his eye line, but yeah. he'd be really disappointed with his first couple of kicks. He just he's almost meters, getting yeah. them off his shin yeah, when he's kicking it. Really unusual technique. He doesn't seem to have his timing right at all. It's almost like he's trying to slice across the ball when he's trying to kick it into that breeze. As it is, Munster have lost another line out. So Buckley's thrown it over the back there. There's confusion with the call and a real let off for Connett, you would suspect. So as has been the warrant, they drive the ball in nice and tight yeah, with this wind and rain here at the Fail sports side. ground in Galway. And use it! Yeah, they're going to change it up now, start kick off no, nine a little bit more. Back. Well, Caelan Blade saw that. He saw that John Ryan had gone through and tried to run into him and claim a penalty, but 
Chris Busby was having none of it and it played on and now the kick has gone up into the hands of Zebo, who we haven't heard a lot from in this first half. He's been very quiet because the ball has been all around their forwards in those ruck situations. But he did get his hands on the ball then and got some good ground. And it's Munster now, 10 metres inside the Connacht half with Murray. He gets it out into the hands of Butler. And they press on towards the middle of the pitch again. And it was almost lost there in the contact. Butler just flips one out wide and the pass has just been thrown over the sideline and unfortunately the calls oh, they don't want to discuss that part, just yeah. going astray again yeah just they gotta be better than that there they've worked hard they've built a couple of decent phases and they've worked don't Calvin Ash all helping. the way off his don't wing right him, to try and give him that overlap and just reward, the yeah. communication just on the edge wasn't where it needs to be or the execution but having said that from Munster's point of view they're still up in the in the in, in Connacht's half and five. we look to put a squeeze on here. The most likely source of points is, still looks like it's going to be penalties, isn't it? The neither team's attack is, is as fluid as you would expect or would like. Yeah, not that going to be giving penalties away inside your own 22 or even inside your own 30 oh, or 40 when the opposition over. have a, a breeze behind them as well. That's one stop. Don't change five. Just don't change. It's Connacht who have used the uh, box kick from Blay, but that one has gone straight up and pretty much almost straight back down. Munster got possession of the ball, but Bundiaki has come in and made the tackle. And Daly ends up picking it up at the back from those scraps. And then Murray puts a box kick back downfield, and that's a nicely worked kick from Connor Murray. Yeah, that's a bit of class from him. He, he just had a little scan as he was going towards that rook. In fairness, okay. it was a turnover, and Munster were trying to play away, but just couldn't get a clean possession. And, he, he saw that Mac Hansen was actually in the, in the rook backwards. and put a lovely kick back over the back of the rook and probably hoped that stayed in really and, and could have got a bit of chase and pressure on, but good defensive set from, from Munster. Well, those are the type of players that you love having in your team who have got that bit of experience, who have got that bit of guile and can get you into a position to really put the squeeze on the opposition. And it's Heffernan throws in it's taken by Prendergast who basketball back. passes it out the back and it ends up in the hands of Buddy Aki who passes off no it's in it's in no no one there's a bit of a scrabbling there again but they're going to go for that kick that was passed back inside so it's just pumped down the middle to Shane Daly who brings it back to within 10 meters inside the connect end of the pitch it's handed out the back again through Zebo, who schemes out the back but just can't come up with anything. Presents the ball to Connor Murray. And they just push forward again through John Ryan, who's on for Oli Jaeger, who went off with that concussion injury earlier on in the match. It's Munster who have the ball, and it's Munster who get the penalty just inside the connect end of the pitch. I don't suspect they'll be. Maybe looking at a kick here, being where it is out near the sideline, the but grind. they may well be looking at using that breeze. It's exactly the same as the one in your yet, okay? And he's just supporting support wet. Yeah, Conor Murray definitely had to think about having a shot at goal. Obviously, he's a, he's a long range kicker as well, but Conor feel hard done by there. The Conor fans just underneath us anyway, but uh, I think Chris Buzzi very clear. He felt keen for now, just had his knee on the ground to support himself for a split second, and that's why he's been penalised. You just wonder as well whether this, within just over two minutes to go, that Munster might fancy themselves. They've tried everything else. Perhaps it's an six. opportunity for them here with only a couple of minutes six. left to perhaps try something different that Connick aren't expecting. Yeah, months. well, I think the, the biggest challenge is when you kick up the line now, you've got to nail the line out part of it. Um, so I wonder where they go to the front here. Yes, towards the front of Ty Byrne, good option. He's taking on seven. Now we've got a small going quickly. Well, Connick have conceded the last four penalties. How are they going to pay for this one? As Munster take the ball in, let's go to ground. There's a bit of a scramble in there, gets thrown out the back, and Ryan ends up with the ball, and he's being thrown back by Heffernan. And also Dooley. But they hold onto the ball, and the ball has been knocked forward. That's touched by Red. Kim Prendergast says he'll put it to hand. The ball stays in. The ball still stays in, and it does go out eventually. I think that's going off Kim Prendergast there, so I think it'll be a must the ball, but is that a, a penalty situation? It's because Prendergast went down holding okay, his second, chest second. area. Well, he's on the ground there. Now he's saying something was done to him as he was on the ground. Yeah, he feels that Tom Ahern dives oh. on him on the ground, um, but he's actually up so now. It's a red, it's a red. So just for the ball. 
well, in fairness, he's actually out of the he's kitchen play before, before yeah, anything's you're ever not, happened. You're, you're also not, you're not allowed to dive a fella on the yeah. ground as well, but look at it. It's just getting, there's a lot of frustration from both sides because neither team have found their rhythm and you can just see that boiling over. Look, it wouldn't be an inter-pro without an edge to it, but it's probably the quality of rugby is actually making players frustrated as well because they're not able to do what they want to do. Now, this supersedes the fact that anything happened anyway because yeah. Kian Prendy has already, already had his hand outside yeah. the pitch, so it supersedes any penalty being given for any foul play there. So another chance for Scott Buckley. Hasn't been the greatest with the lineouts, and it hasn't been the greatest again. That's a huge area of concern for Graham Roundtree and the Munster coaching staff as they head towards half time. What should have been Munster on the attack is now Connacht with 10 seconds remaining before the break. But they put it down. Okay, Although we've been here. with a knock on there. We're going to go back. Okay, we're just going to put time off. I think it's Gav Coombs, is it? Or no? Well, yeah, well, it doesn't. It doesn't look like a no, good it's not no, it's Jack Just he's he's the assist tackler here. I understand. He goes to Jackal. He's knocked the ball in there. Oh, he's he right really, knee. If he shot at me like that again. Oh, oh yeah. Really it looks like it's thing. okay. It's just a clean out from from Ralston. Yeah. I think that could be quite yeah, serious. Uh, it it looks looks play, just to confirm, Marco. And then coming from the side there, it looks like he's medial ligament on the inside. Yeah, he's just inside okay, of his knee. Just got I think what? Yeah. He sounds like he's in a bit of pain as well. You heard him just before the referee when the referee yeah. stopped the game. He it sounds like he's in a bit of pain. It's not a nice injury for anyone to get. He's in that position. You're always vulnerable in that position as well. Okay, Tim, we'll check. Yeah, so it looks like it's overextended. It's on the screen now. And they're having a look at it as well because of the position that the tackler came in from. Okay, Chris, we're going to be looking at the actions of the arriving player. Green 14, well. I think it is. Sure. Okay, at the screen now. It looked nasty. We hope for Adonahue's sake it's not as nasty as it looks. Yeah, are we seeing a wrap there though? Yeah, he's still illegal. He's outside, right? Well, that angle there, he's coming in, wrapping his hands. Yeah, it's going to be the other one. On the, the far one side that. that they're looking for, this one's here. here. Yeah, we're going to get that other angle again, and we'll slow it down for you. Yeah, so he's in the side, he's made contact with the knee. It's a hard one, that one, because he is coming in to make the tackle. It's unfortunate that the it's knee is in that position. It's a dangerous clean. It's, it's, it's I'm, not say it's him, I'm not seeing a tucked shoulder. So it just misses the clean. So I'm looking at a yellow card yeah. here for a yeah. dangerous clean, right? Yeah. But from that angle there, it looks like he's gone directly towards the knee. But when you okay, see Marco, it from the so angle behind, what we're on it looks a little bit different. So it's number 14 green. He's entered the breakdown dangerously. He's in the side, so he's not legal. He is making an attempt to wrap, so we're not seeing a tucked shoulder. But he has made contact with the knee, causing an injury to this player. So we do see that as dangerous, and we do see it as foul play. Do you anything to add to that? No, I agree with all those facts, Chris. OK, so we're looking at a yellow card Agreed. for 14 green. So it'll be okay. Byron Ralston, who finds himself in the sim bin for oh, the oh, first 10 minutes of the second half. Injury anyway. Just captain of 14, please. So we do have we do have an illegal action because you're in the side of the breakdown. We're not seeing it as a tucked shoulder. However, we do see it as dangerous and we do see it as foul play. It's causing injury to this player. So it's a yellow card. Not in the side. So you heard the explanation there coming in from the side. Not seen as foul play, but coming yeah, in from the side which caused the injury. So only 10 minutes and that mitigates it down from a red card. Yeah. Thanks, Marco. Yes. Yes. Very difficult. For, I, I don't dispute that Ralston came in the side, but I'm telling you, you, look at most of the rooks that we've seen tonight or in most games, they're just as bad in the side. And he said, Oh, because the player's injured. That's, that's you know, the, that's look the at, sport. That's a sport, yeah. So uh, look at it, probably. 
No, look, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and, and unfortunately for yeah. O'Donoghue, it's it's a terrible injury, and he's yeah, just let him get off, guys. Yeah, trying try to get on. some comfort there he's at the moment guy. with some painkillers yeah. because it is a, a, it, what looks like a serious injury, and, and more so for Munster, it's going to cause bigger issues for them long term because they're going to be out with yeah, another player the for a long period of time. Yeah, it's as bad a run as I've seen. I mean, they had a lot of injuries Monica at the start ready, of the last yeah. season, which I think was a factor in they ramping up the training intensity and then it all settled down but like you saw the the two injuries they've had so far tonight i mean it's just rugby you know it's nothing to do with Dave conditioning or or high I'm tempo up, their contact injuries but you can't really protect yourself against too much well butler's going to put this one out here and it's fair to say even with the line out still taking place we into the added time now because of that in fact it's a uh, penalty Okay, but it's fair here. to say that their lineup hasn't been the greatest part of their game tonight. So Six. Six. Scott Buckley will have some work to do here uh, if still close the back here. Monster Ali to hold on to this ball and try and come up with something before the halftime interval. Joyce and Beal and Waite, they'll be looking to pinch as they've done so many times already in this match. Buckley sets, Buckley throws. Contest, they do get hold of it though, just Tango. about there through Tom Ahern. It juggled. Stay but here. they did get the ball, so it will count as a clean line out for them. They take the ball down inside Heads that. There. It's a rare body slowing it. 22 area. One last throw of the dice before half time for Munster. Are oh, we going to see the first five pointer? right at the end of the first half. It's Kendallin who came on as a replacement who Hold. took the ball in. And Munster moved forward again through the skipper, Tyg Byrne, with that distinctive blue head guard. OK, no three. Play the ball, don't push it in. Stay back, Green. This time it's the red head guard, Hodnett, who scored that winning try in the URC final last year. Butler just passes the ball off to his right winger, Calvin Nash. It's Buckley. Well, they go from side to side. And in the end, they're going nowhere. So Connick, you would expect, will probably tap and put the ball out and we'll head to half time. Yeah, I think you summed it up perfectly. They're yeah, going nowhere. That's out, the yeah. that's the problem. They just aren't doing making any effect on the kind of defensive line. Haven't kept the backfield honest in this kind of area, and it just looks so predictable. And Connacht go in at halftime shouting about how good their defence is, but I think it's a mixture of good defence, average attack. Well, Connacht lost one player in Kyle Four with Byron Ralston. Yep. Set to spend the opening ten minutes in the sim bin. So underway we go again, through the boot of Hanrahan. And Connick with that breeze behind them, and Munster will need to work on a couple of things in the second half. The lineouts will be one of them. Five lineouts they lost in that opening period, compared to none for Connick. So with that win behind the home team in the second half, it's going to give them a, a bit of a burst of enthusiasm, perhaps. But equally for Munster, they're going to have to work extremely hard to maintain or even improve this three-point lead. Okay, stay on, please. So, box kick from Winner's Connor ball. Murray. Now, in the first half, Connick tried a, a different approach to that, which didn't really work out. That one has worked out much better for the Connick Number two, team who have been penalised. It worked out well for Munster. Lovely box kick from Murray. They get the ball back from the penalty. And Bernard Jackman, perhaps that was what the Connick team should have been Number doing in the first half. Yeah, well, it's just so controlled by Murray. He just played an extra phase over it into 15, then got his the rook nice and long, the, the old caterpillar rook balance. that everyone okay. hates, but I made that, sure that he could get a little, a little bit less pressure on himself. And then it shows you how, how strong the wind is that he wasn't able to find touch, but he drilled it in the five meter channel. And, and then obviously, when Caden Blade picked it up, they were able to get onto it. So, uh, okay, yeah, nice start. But the problem for Munster is uh, you identify it there. They lost five in the first half, but five or six, the two six. of the ones they won were untidy. Can have they been able to get the right message on a half time to 
find some options. It looks like they're sticking with this yeah, full line out. For but big pressure on Booker here to start making sure Munster gets some first base possession. Well, the wind certainly hasn't helped with those line out throws. He went to the back once in that first half and was a judge not to have gone in straight. Okay, and the five line it over. That one there That's was a, a shorter one. If it had gone long, he would have been in trouble again. One stop. As, as it is, it's Munster, you have the ball. And they're inside that connect end of the pitch and they're into that strong breeze that's really picked up just before half time to use it which will be behind the home team in the second half so Munster will have to work extremely hard with this ball in hand there aren't going to be any tries where they go 80 or 90 meters of the field the conditions have pretty much seen to that so they get on that short side and it's lovely hands Hold here. from Murray through Coombs the and then further out wide. But it was a first That's half that was very, very similar to what we're seeing here. It was a war of attrition. It will certainly continue into this second 40 minutes. Back by Red. The calls for the knock on, but referee Chris Busby says it's gone backward. So Munster maintain possession. It's on the ball for me. So five play. Still just under five minutes on the clock for Byron Ralston in that sim bin. So they're down five. a player for another five minutes. One step back, clear step back by one. Butler just ships it on. Go, go, go. And pick up the penalty. Too far beyond the break time. Yeah, it's against Butler actually, the 10. Take it beyond the break time, brought the ground. He played a little short pass. In fairness, you know, again, we're just seeing that Munster pack are attack quite toothless. Um, Barrett had once where Conor Murray shot down the blind side down a five meter channel. They never really had Connacht stress, and Connacht were able to, to make their tackle, get the tackle out of the way, and then send a body fly, flying in on the counter rook, which is making that ball at the back of the rook a, a real mess for Murray or whoever else is playing nine. So, yeah, I, I, I know they're against the wind, but I think. I think they've got to start when they're going across the field there in that area of the field. Where's the space in the backfield? Can you drill it into touch? Can you start putting pressure on the Connacht line and make them exit? It hasn't been good for them. But the more phase they play, the more likely they are for me to, to, to give away a penalty for, for, for not resourcing the rook property. Well, Jack Cardi came onto the field early for Cole Ford, who went off with a uh, concussion injury and didn't return. More. So there were changes in that back line. The changes there is Butler. Races 10 metres. We haven't seen much of that in the opening 45 minutes of this game. The Connick inside the Munster half looking to perhaps do something a little bit different with the advantage being played now. So they have a free play if they can pass the ball on. And that one's been knocked down. Well, I can see okay, what's being said there by Dave Heffernan's asking a question well, we about whether that was a deliberate knockdown when they had an opportunity out wide. Yeah, I, I think it was a genuine Long attempt, to be yeah. fair. Number but six, player nine. I didn't actually see it there. Carty, who's now the Connor captain, is. Yeah, we see that Chris Bush, we'd have another look at it. Look. Well, I think they're talking about yeah. it because of the fact it was an advantage yeah. that was being played, but that I don't think it's going to go yeah. any further. That, that's a reef, that's a reef, okay? I know you won't agree. So Hanrahan, who got the scoring going for Connacht in this game, now has the chance to bring them level. It's by no means a straightforward kick, though, in these conditions. Just over 30 metres out, almost directly in front. get those three points so we're all level yeah Connick six and Munster six and two minutes left remaining in the sim bin for Byron Ralston and first to Connick it was a better attack good line it up for the gas using Jared Butler to get into that 10 channel and then he started to create a little bit of quick ball and, and the first that drew the penalty out of Thomas Ahern who who panicked a little bit and, and grabbed Caelan Blade which was obviously what the referee picked up on Butler oh. gets us back underway and he's put it out in the fault so he went for a bit of distance, but the issue with the wind 
is it's right coming now. down the pitch behind Connick, but also it's coming towards the corner on the side of the pitch, right. which Butler kicked it to. So he's gone it. It's gone out in the fall, and Connick have opted for the scrum. Just that same balance, lads. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. Nice slow calls, fellas. Okay, don't change. And both square this side, please. Well, that gives you an indication. Perhaps not of the wind, because those flags are wrapped around those poles there. Maybe the conic flag on the right might, but there's a fair bit of rain that's been falling okay, in okay, and around up. the okay, sports ground since about right. an hour and a half before kickoff. Just alignment, fellas, is it? Yeah. Okay, let's go. I guess these are the days when those talks about getting a synthetic pitch are certainly coming to the fore. <laughs> yeah, look at it. If any place in, in Europe needs one, it's it's. it's Galway, obviously, the, the rain wind and rain is coming in from the Atlantic yeah. there, and it certainly favour Connacht in a big way. Um, but that's not really their game. Their game is right. more around that transition attack. But now they've got to play the percentages. They've got to just force Munster to try and run from deep, put pressure Seven. on him defensively in the right areas of field, and kick your goals if they're on offer like we saw from Hanover there. Okay, use it. The well, blade comes to the near side. On. It's on. And they go for the kick straight through. And see, that's really smart. That's what I, I think Munster should should be looking to do a little bit, not mess around, put us low trajectory kicks down. But it makes me more sense for Connacht now because of how vulnerable Munster's lineout looks uh, has looked. I mean, they could easily have the ball back here and have possession in the right area of the field. Five. Well, the troops are ready on the sideline for Connacht. Change is set to be made. It's not often you go into a line at almost expecting to get the ball every time. That time they didn't know. That's the ball's taken down by Tyg Byrne, the skipper. And to be fair, when they've, when they've thrown to Tyg Byrne, they look much more comfortable and he's managing to find a little bit of space. He's got lovely soft hands and they might need to do a little bit more of that. Well, the ball's been taken in lovely by Bolton. Murray had the right idea, penalty to Connick though, and they'll get one 42 metres out now. They're going to kick from here. A bit, a bit more difficult because of the position it's in, however, it may well be that they look at this option. Yeah, I think, I'm surprised they haven't got for a shot of goal there, but really good by, by Bolton, really physical. Shane Daly just gets, he under challenged that ball near her, he stays south as such so he can make the tackle on, on Bolton but he gets past Bolton which gives Bolton a free run into Ty Byrne he breaks that tackle and you know he started running the front five forwards then and they, they just struggle to get a good contact on him and now it's a real good opportunity for Connor too whose own lineup has looked pretty settled to be fair but be interesting if they can nail it here just step off captain thank you well Ralston's back on so they're back to the full complement He's put the ball down at the back there and then okay. looked as though it'd been knocked on. Okay, two yeah. knock-ons, fellas. Yeah, it has first been knocked on. First is in the line-out by Red, then we'll one by Green. Yes. So it'll be a first knock-on against Munster, so it'll be a conic scrum. So despite scrum. not taking it's that line-out clean, they're going gone. to get the ball and the opportunity from a scrum. Yeah, great pressure in the air there from Thomas O'Hearn. You can see he's late to the jump. Not, or Dar Murray's up in front of him, but he doesn't give up on it. And just yeah, unfortunately for him, he knocks it on in the... Win, yeah. Just in the process sure of trying to okay. disrupt the delivery. Well, now, you and I spoke before this game about who was going to win it, and we couldn't work it out, could we? So, I, no. think, I, think, I, I think we got a fair idea that it was going to be Christ. close and it was going to be something like this, but the weather has just added to it. Yeah, but I think now, the way it is now, you'd have to fancy Connacht set. just with how strong that wind looks and how vulnerable's monster set piece has been. Yeah, added to the fact they've lost a couple of forwards as well two injuries aren't going to see them come back onto the pitch so it is Connick with the ball through Bolton again he's, he's come across to this he's put there by right hand side getting through plenty of work the Connick left winger so Blade picks gives the ball off to Heffernan and Prendergast with a, a nice little flick ball back inside to Butler Bealham he's helped along by Bundiaki He's and they might be in a bit of trouble here. No. Lost it now. Well, they've managed to just about hold on to it, and it's Hanrahan who's been manhandled by Simon Zebo. 
Heffernan again. He's been getting through a mountain of work. But a player going off their feet. And Munster your feet, your pick up off. the penalty right in front of their post, 22 out, minutes out. Connick have blown a wonderful opportunity there. Yeah, after after two, okay, no, no, probably silly here. Right. after three phases, you actually feel the ball's a liability. That every time they build a phase, it's more likely there's going to be an infringement from the attacking point of view. We saw Tyg burn a phase or two before that. It looked like he had rights to the ball, but. Um, referee felt the rook was over, but just there then eventually can't go off their feet. And it's so important that you have territory. And it's just going to be interesting to see if if Butler can can help get Connor down or get Munster okay. down there because at the moment. Okay, time off, guys. Subs number four and one. Subs. They're going to struggle to get their own half. Down, and obviously, you just worry from from them obviously having to make so many substitutions early in the game six, six. and the change they had going into the game six. whether the bit, their bench can give them that, that impact that you imagine Connacht's will you see six. likes of Buckley coming on here obviously vastly experience is yeah. it five so or six Darren and, Murray and Peter Dooley who have been okay, replaced be six, okay? so it's five and I want you to open up as well okay I'll let you match so it's his uh, brother out. Noel Murray who's come on to replace yeah, Darren Murray and yeah. Yeah. Peter Dooley replaced by Dennis Buckley so a couple of changes seven or so minutes into the Second half for Connick to try and beef things up somewhat in the forwards. But yeah. it's and statistically, Darren okay, Noel Murray is the best line-out operator defensively in the in the competition or has been over the last year. So no Scott Buckley's afternoon's got even harder. But it's Munster who's got that ball there, just inside the uh, their own Not half. In. But Right, what you're saying before, both teams, the further they seem to go through the phases, the less confidence they seem to have. And that's why Murray's getting this ball on his, on his toe there. He just doesn't want to, to overplay, look at the force and error, but they've got to get a better chase than that. That's too easy for Bolton. But now at least they're in the right half of the field from a monster point of view. Yeah, okay, I suspect Connick right might be looking at doing something similar and trying to get that ball down there, using happen. that wind and just trying to put themselves into a, a much better Golden position as they've just done there yeah, through right. Jack Cardi, but it's gone... Well, hasn't really done much at all. It's gone straight down the throat of Tony Butler, who's, well, he's running back, looking for options, and he hadn't any options at all. So in the end, he takes the tackle. He isn't turned over. They do control the ball, and Munster will roll on again. Yeah, would you imagine Murray would kick this again. he play one phase here just to get organised, get his big, big forwards on the Isn't ground, it? and then he'll take responsibility. That's a rock, too. But what he got to do is, this part's easy. It's the... Pressure in the air, they're allowing Connacht to field these balls away. too quickly. It's still going down Mac Hansen okay. channel. And use it! Okay, two. It's last time. And here comes the option now. The charge down wasn't on, but that's gone straight down into the hands of uh, Mac Hansen at the back, who uh, skirts around a couple, but he's taken the ground. So Connacht are inside their own half by five metres. <laughs> So that's effectively, that's effectively what Munster have to do to win this game. They've got to not mess around their own half. They're going to use Murray's box kicking rather than Butler's um, and then make sure that they get after the defensive rooks. Now, in fairness, his, his, five, kick, first arrive, his, his, left the his box kick was, was a poor box kick because it was so well, low. Mac Hansen had a chance to, to counter-attack, but in fairness, their kick chase line was, was very strong. And this is an opportunity now to go into the corner. They're not going to get a chance to sp spend much time in the Connacht half. But they need to take get points when they are there. Well, Ty Byrne did just that there. He picked the ball up and uh, got the penalty. And they're playing ugly, both of these teams. But that's going to be the way you're going to have to win this game because of the conditions. Yeah, they've shown a slight. They haven't had many opportunities. But when they've caught and drove, they've actually got Connor going backwards. And it's that kind of night, isn't it, where you, you know you catch the ball in the line out, you take it down, you drive, you force another penalty. Because uh, they okay. haven't shown yeah, any yeah, likelihood yeah. of breaking Connor down from from a backline point of view. He's him. Well, that tells you the story there, that Connacht have conceded four more penalties than Munster. Will they count for more towards the end? We shall see, but that's... It's, well, I was going to say it's it worked gathered. kindly. It's re by it worked player. kindly for Munster, and in the end, Butler slipped over, didn't knock the ball on, and he's re the ball. So oh, Munster green. rolled forward. So Take a little bit there. of good luck there and good fortune for the Munster side. Uh, I thought it was a knock-on, but anyway, 
they have the ball in the right area and they're, they're working their way towards the post. Well, the referee said, I think, it came off, someone's come off Butler's leg, so he got very lucky there, but we'll see what the wash-up comes, if anything comes from it, as Byrne takes the ball forward again, and Connick trying to muscle up there in the middle, and they've done that, but they've given away the penalty at the same time for not rolling away, and here is a chance for Butler to put Munster in front. Real clear if you want a jackal. Back to him, please. It's regathered by the same player, Jack. You're not captain. Through your captain, please. Okay, not now. What, what, what's the option here? Okay, shot. Sorry, I just listened to. I wanted to hear what Tyburn was, was saying there. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I understand that. It's just me, looking it's at very the tight where the rocks there. The ball okay. is regathered. I, I think he did regather it. The, the question was, did it come off an opposition player before he regathered the ball? In the end, it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, Tyke Burns' point was, he, 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 I think he feels that Chris Busby is, is giving the defensive side too much time. He's asking him, tell him to release the ball, which, uh, as Tyke Burns' point was, that by that stage the ball's already so slow that he can't do anything for it. But, like, given the fact that they lost that line out, this is a, this is a gimme three points for them if they can kick it over here because they hadn't to do a huge amount. It was very untidy, wasn't it, the play leading up to this penalty. Just say, give us a flag for Slater Well, they went up in the end there for Tony Butler. So it is Munster who extend that lead back out to three points. It's nine, six, and further then with uh, around 23 minutes of this match remaining. So you're right there, what you say about the lineouts, though, because I think Connick will be kicking themselves later in this game, considering how much possession they've picked up from lineouts. So we're back underway again. And now it becomes a, a bit like. Russian roulette. Okay, that's Jack Angel back. comes on for Finley Bealham. So another change up front for Connick. Yes, Who blinks inside, first yeah. in this game? And the ball's there. Connor Murray there in scrum half is just trying to direct everything. Okay, I so need much it. experience. So much knowledge of the game. Made his league debut at this ground 14 years ago. He's been around so long. And it'll be up to him to try and get them home. Yeah, and that's a very good exit. Again, Frisch caught the line out, just dropped the ball off to Kandela, and then Murray just took over. And you can hear the kind of crowd screaming, use it, use it, use it, because they feel that he's maybe taking too long, but he's doing everything in a controlled manner. And up to now, he's staying on the right side of the referee. But... Okay, guys, just to open up, I'm going to bring them in, open up on the air. Come in and four, please. That's good. The rain continues to really fall down here. It's Butler who takes the ball off the back of that line out. There's advantage being played and a penalty You're given. Good. Okay, number seven offside. So Josh John Hodnett has been given offside. So this is a very kickable penalty to bring us back to level turn number straight away. Hanrahan will take those three points. He's in pretty much exactly the same position as he was. You're good, no problem. For yeah. his previous yeah, kick. So we need a wide angle on this. So effectively, the more the line is not over yet. Yeah, I'm going to explain. So yeah. Hodnett's already yeah. there. So they're breaking the tankers, anticipating their breakout. So as as break up, break up. The calls clear. You've came early. Wait until the arms are down. So I think Munster's argument is that the Connacht team, or the Connacht attack, are also breaking as well. They're anticipating it too. So he's taking his trigger off that. But realistically, you know, it's up to the referee to pick out that that. that the, the touch judge is probably just watching the defensive side. Well, he had 53 points in all competitions this season coming into it. He's moved to 59. He now moves to 62 points for the season, does JJ Hanrahan. We're back. Level ball game, nine okay, piece, time points time apiece, please. with 20 minutes remaining at the sports ground. Seven. I must be a bad omen. Just I was in Toma Park so last we week and got no try. 9 3, Leinster beat Munster, and now we're, <laughs> we're in Galway. First game of the new year, 9 all, no try either. It's but sub all already, is it? I'm blaming the rain and the wind. Just confirm we're good to go, that's me, yeah. Bernard Jackman's been relieved Come of on. all duties for the rest of the season <laughs> until we have tries scored. So here we go. It's Butler to get us underway again. Oh. A 20 minute shootout. 9 9. Who blinks first? Okay, no tackle there. 
And Bolton did well then. I mean, he took the ball, and equally doing as well oh, is Nar Murray. He's not on who ball. thundered forward. To green. And Bolton's down in the background with what looked like a, a cramp injury. Okay, play an advantage. So there's an advantage being played before Connington has penalty being high given. Tackle. Yeah, I think it's a high tackle on Murray as he and it's, well, just confirmed the mark. as he broke through that pick and go. So that's the second one we've Number seen nine. from that area of the field. High the first tackle. one, the friend of guy. So Munster, still high though. Still high. Yeah. yeah. Are just putting they're, they're struggling to put a little plug in behind just the rook in that area of the field. They're trying to cover the backfield and they've got exploited twice. And these are the tempting really ones for the kicker to try and put the ball as far down the field as you can, but he's got to make sure that he puts the ball out of play first and foremost, does Jack Carty. It's a good kick, to be fair. And sometimes you'll have somebody who tries to it's nip an extra 10 or 15 yeah. metres yeah, yeah. and just try and come up with that off. magic play, but Carty's just gone with a bit of sense and experience six. and put the ball out. Five, five months, sir. <laughs> well, Peter Wilkins is jumping around in okay, his yeah, box let's, let's get just in, down from us. Safe for that, yeah, that's fine. He looks Let's like a, a rather nervous coach at the moment. Just inside that last 20 minutes, has to decide in making any more subs and wants his team to come out on top, and obviously. That's green. gone backwards as Connick then knocked the ball forward and it will be a month to put in at that scrum. Yeah, great pressure with Tyburn in the air there. You just see it. He Good contest at the line-out. Friends, I think the throw is spot right on by Heffernan. Just, yeah, just there. He gets across. You could probably argue that maybe not forward but just this nah, kind of don't deal with that ball i think it's jack carty knocks it on there yeah that's the one he's given guys some new players here just really slow calls okay do not pull back okay control your weight yeah. well you can't fault chris Bosby's communication in this game he's been talking to the players all the way throughout they may not have liked everything they've heard but his communication has been top notch same balance Stand up. Okay, I, I agree, but it's their put in. Take more space if we're going to get pre engaged. Okay, let's get it right now. Let's go. We're too close. They were right on top of you. Okay, let's go, lads. Let's go. You know, I know World Rugby wanted to improve the, the speed of the game and making sure line outs and so forth were much quicker, but this is still an area at times that does take a, a, a fair bit of time off the clock and does take a, a bit of Crunch. getting everyone in position to make sure it's done correctly. Bind! Early. Closing the space. Well, yeah. Free kick's been given. Against. Free engage far side. It's messy. It's against Buckley. Referee warned him that they were... Munster's put in, so they could set Ten the mark. It's kind of need Ten. to make sure that they get that distance right. Thank you. I've no problem with that at all. If they're consistent with it, it's absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. Well, that kick maybe didn't go as deep as what they probably wanted. Bolton ends up taking it. Blade gets a bit of a, a high shot, but he ducks underneath it. We seem to be uh, playing on as normal at the moment. They're looking for a penalty. Our monster, but it's Connick who are going to get it. Support your way, please. Well, both teams were trying to find a reason for a penalty then. No, Murray's telling everyone to calm down. Hands beyond on the ball, please. Not the space beyond. Yeah, he... Look at you've seen him giving us a fair jackal as well. But... Just sent two off there. Blade, Blade is so Hooker. powerful, isn't he? You Sub. know, any little half Sub. half opportunity, he's got a shrugging off the tackle and getting good leg drive. Well, another sub there for Conic Heffernan has been replaced by Dylan Tini Martin, who's just Back taken the ball there and will be first port of call be to throw the ball in. So Heffernan departs on his 188th Connick cap and he's replaced Hold. Hold. by Dylan Tini Martin middle, with his 32nd right. appearance for it. the That's province. Stay here. Curly Langton is also off. Replaced by Connor Oliver. There's that blade. Oh, he thought he saw a gap, he went through it, but it got closed very quickly indeed. And a crunching tackle. Well, it's a bit of a mess in there at the moment. The Connick team do, have managed to hold on to possession. There's Buckley. 
three or four clinic players used up in that one. Oliver's come in, but there's an injury in back okay. play. Greener in possession going forward. We're just going to stop for a player here. Okay, we may have a potential head injury, fellas. I think it's Caelan Blade who's down nine green there, Marco. around there. It is Caelan Blade. The uh, skipper. He looks like he's picked up a head knock. He'd be a bit of a loss at this stage of the game uh, with experience. He'd be a huge loss. And just see what happens. Look, he goes for a little half break there. That's a good tackle by Buckley. I said he might be captain jacket. Well, he's yeah. got an accidental knee. Has he? He's, he's got an off. accidental so knee. I couldn't make it who we, it was he came through, but he just gets an accidental knee here. Oh, it's Lockman. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's totally accidental. No, yeah. no wonder he's. Yeah, that hurt. He's shook from that. Yeah. In fairness, again, we just see how like he just sees that. That's well closed by Buckley, but for a split second there, there's no pillar in place, and he goes after it. And from there, it was just no a real mess then. No It'd be HIA, I think. He's yeah. definitely going off, as he will say today. Yeah. And Mike, Michael McDonald is the is a sub nine. He's on loan from Ulster this year. Played a lot of his club rugby in, in Ulster, but initially from Dundalk. Um, big game for him to come on. Well that was a hard job, isn't it? To come straight into that position with 15 minutes to go. So tight. No problem, thanks. Fellas, there's too much weight coming across. I need you to hold your weight. Too much weight coming across. There is confirmation of that HIA for Caelan Blade. Yeah, fellas, it's the same as the first half. There is no fog play. We just stopped for safety there, so it'll be your scrum going forward. So we spoke about that. 6 2 split Good. on the Conic yes. bench earlier. We need that That's space. a straight spot, that across. one there. McDonald for Caelan Blade. But that is a big, big loss if he doesn't return to the field. And I suspect with that knee that he got to the head that he may not be. So we're 9 all, with 15 minutes remaining. Just go back to what I said before coming into this six points separating fourth and 11th. One through eight. And Connacht in 10th. Set! So all to play for. Even the bonus points count. A draw would be just as good. An extra couple of points and a penalty to Connacht. And they may be thinking of more than a draw. They may be thinking of victory because they'll be looking surely at three points here. Yeah, we're still live here. Yeah, we've. You, you want to be shot? Yeah, yeah, shot called. I mentioned earlier on a night like this, you're trying so 18, to find a bit of dominance at, at mall time. Neither team have been able to, but just the impact players at, at scrum time. Jack Anger there just was able to give them that nudge forward. The scrum has been quite messy. No team have been clearly dominant, but that's the first one we've seen a real shift forward, and that's the impact off the bench. And as we said that's earlier, our Munster are going to be able to match that given the injuries they had before the game and, and out, and obviously during it early losing losing the likes of Oli Jaeger uh, so early in the game and, and Jack O'Donoghue. Yeah, it's only been a, a minor shift, but you can almost see in that last 10 minutes with a few of those subs, it's made a, a difference for the Connick team. So here is Hanrahan to try and put Connick in front. And he's put it over, so for the first time since early in this game, Connick now hold the lead. They're 12 points to nine up with around 13 minutes remaining. Hanrahan with his fourth successful penalty of the match, his third in the second half. From Connick point of view here, it's just a good clean catch and then get it back down the field. No messing around. Munster will be hoping for a mistake straight away. Now, we saw it in the first half after they managed that first penalty goal. They don't do it there. Bundiaki takes the ball, and it's McDonald Use it. in place of Blade there at the back. back who okay, hold on tight, Green. That big, long pass back. But this time, they've got the win behind them in the second half. And a man we haven't heard too much from this match, Simon Zebo. He's now got a chance to do something as he slips across the field and offloads it. And this is probably the best attacking play we've seen in the whole match. And that's Shane Daly down that left-hand wing. As Munster looked to come up with something, this time okay. they just drive the ball in through Gavin Coombs and back down the short side again. They go through Hodnett. He scored that winning try in the URC final last year. Hodnett, can he come up with a winner in this match here against Connacht? Okay, well, they batter the ball in and they just try and get away as quickly as possible to not give that penalty away. 
But this really is the most attacking we've seen in this whole match from either side. A couple of passages where it really went out through three, four, five sets of hands. Besides that, due to the conditions, we haven't seen much at all. We must hold on to it. They're a team known going deep in their phases and picking up a try, but this will be something different in this one. They're going to have to come up with something. It's going to be quite remarkable because we haven't seen much from either side so far tonight. No, no. They're working away. And they keep on going back to that left-hand side. Tyke Byrne, the captain. And they've knocked the ball on, though. Well, Frisch, I don't know whether he thought the ball wasn't going to him, but they put the kick down field anyway in the end. It's an advantage over, so the Munster do hold on to the ball. Feet so they're back off. to a similar position on the opposite side of the field as to where they were when they dropped it a moment or two ago. And they look like they're going to be trying things a little bit differently now with 10 minutes remaining. Still a long time remaining in this match though. And Connor Murray's just got a bit of a knock there. Off the back. Completely accidental, I think. He gets himself back into it though. As Munster now look to come out this right hand side here. And that's wonderful defense though from Ralston. You'll feel he's got some making up to do though after that 10 minute stint in the sim bin just around the half time mark. No, don't go in there, not him there, no. Well, Munster still have the ball. It's there. Murray gets to his feet. Butler looks to his left. And Connick do their job in the midfield. Zebo looks back inside. Nothing happening there. Oh, that's it. Fear Munster getting closer to losing this ball. Yeah, it's been slow, it's been tedious, and you're right what you're yeah. saying there. And there you go. The Bernard Jack recorded. You're looking close to getting, losing this ball, and they did just that. They were going backwards. They weren't sure what they were doing. They almost looked like they don't have a game plan at times. It's a really poor attacking performance from, from Munster. I know the conditions are really poor, but they're just not implementing a hurting monster. The best two phases they've had were off first phase counter attack. One was where Jack Carty hit Zebo in the backfield, and they looked dangerous for a second. And the second one was where Calvin Nash ran it back there. But any multi phase stuff, they just look very predictable and haven't asked enough questions of the of the monster defense. But you've a player on the wrong side. So, so if you jackal there, I'm going to penalize him. Yeah, yeah. But he sometimes. Yeah, yeah, no, you were totally fine, but, but, but there was a guy tapped yeah, at the yeah, bottom. No Might have been him, actually. Okay, time on, please. Well, we're ready to go again. Sorry, just repeat that. And Hanrahan, from around uh, 47 or so metres out. From behind here, yeah. He's almost directly in the middle of the field. That's from behind. Will hope to put his side six points in front. Well, the rain still falls. And the crowd, well, they like what they see because JJ Hanrahan has made it a fifth penalty for Connie, a fourth in the second half. On, his side lead Munster by 15 points to nine with just five. over eight minutes remaining in this one. Yeah, he's kicked, he's kicked really well, hasn't he? And, oh, sorry. No, you know, no, when no, you think you. that Jack Hardy's five, been on the field at the same time five. for a long time, but he's Stop. taken every opportunity he has and just okay. punished Munster for just let me know we're good, any right? little indiscipline that they've had and they need to pull something yeah, they need to out of the bag now and it doesn't look likely okay. really. Be interesting if they can find one play to break this kind of defensive line which would look quite comfortable. Well, Joe Joyce has gone off and replaced by yeah, Oshin Dowling, who made his Connick debut just under three years ago. So okay, he's a bit of a line-out specialist, is Dowling, so he may be required in his last eight minutes or so. As Carty gets that big kick downfield, but into the hands of Simon Zebo, And it's 
all to play for now. They're just going to have a look at doing something special. If any man's going to do something special, it'll be Zebo. Now, he's complaining about a high shot there across the top from Ralston, but it was right in front of the assistant referee. It was right in front of the referee, and they said play on. They may come back and have a look at it, but as it is, it's Munster, who are 10 metres inside the college end of the field, trailing by six points. There's seven and a half minutes remaining in this match. And they move on forward with one of their replacements who's just come on for them in Sean O'Brien, the former Connick man. He's come on for Tony Butler. The ball's there. So will a former Connick player come back to haunt his former team? He's got seven minutes or so in which to do it. As Munster bring the ball into contact again. Iconic defence rally. Here, right for me. And Munster again, they're uh, doing that. Looking to go from side to side. They're going to have to penetrate somewhere, though, because at the Tango! moment, they're not really going anywhere. And we've seen this one Back. a few times before. No, and Murray's knocked the ball forward after it's gone backwards. And Connick have come up with the ball, and they've also come up with the penalty. So Frisch has questioned what that for. Okay, we just hold. The referee said for not releasing and holding on. Okay, easy enough. Jared Butler was the man at the bottom of it. Okay. No, no, okay. Okay, but this is what they're going to talk about here. Now, Zebo was questioning whether it was a high shot. Now he's falling at the same time. So whether that's a mitigating circumstance. Yeah, we're good, Ken, yeah. Okay. Well, Zebo wasn't impressed. Okay, not, number nine's going off there. The referees okay, seem to be happy with what's happened. The table will come in. Okay. Back hand, please. Nine. Sub. Yeah, I think it's probably no harm. Okay, we'll get that sub done and then we'll, then we'll put time back on. Conor Murray's really getting frustrated with the, with the referee. He's going to be taking off now. He's going to make now. this sub. Two subs here and then we'll put it back on. Just confirm you need nine off, yeah? Yeah, okay, we're going to play. Nice. They're not making a substitution now. Okay, we're going to go oh, yeah. Shot. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so number nine holding on the ground, and we're going shot. I think Munster's well, argument is, and Conor Murray's right. argument is, is that it's, the referee is communicating. Well, Mac Hansen on the far side here looks like he's in a, a bit of trouble. He's getting he some did. treatment. He has looked. He said there's and no. They're holding his. He said no. They're holding his hand over there in his arm. He did. Yes. Well, I'm not sure, exactly sure what he's done, but he's getting. He looked like he was in a bit of discomfort. That's confirmation that Patterson's replaced Murray for Munster. That's but for green now as well, the we'll keep an eye on that and see what's happened there up. with Mac Hansen on the far side. But as it is, Hanrahan likes his chances with the wind behind him on the halfway mark. He's kicked four penalties okay, in the so second half. He's kicked right. five overall. This to make it more than a converted try in favour of his side connect. I think he's just pulled that one to the right. Or to his left, I should say. Okay. So he misses out. Doesn't get those extra three points. And that's the injury that's happened to Mac Hansen. Now his right arm behind, has just please. been caught as he's gone in to try and get the ball. His arm has been caught and bent under. Well, Cardi tried to go to the corner. It was the correct decision because he wanted to make sure he wound that clock down and put them right down inside Munster's half. It was charged okay, down, but Prendergast has picked the ball back up again. So McDonald takes it out. They do hold on to the ball. It's a big five minutes for Michael McDonald with his side leading by six points as he came on for Blade. So he'll have to direct the traffic around. Well, there he is there, in there with the ball. The ball's out. He's going to have to get rid of it in a minute. No, leave it 20. They do hold on to it. So we're just under four minutes as Buckley comes out of that ruck with the ball in hand. Yeah, Munster need that ball back. They're chasing every ruck. With everything they have, but Connor Deferns are going to try and play percentages territory. Great kick. That's exactly what 
Connor Neal at the time. That's what he tried about four phases ago, but got locked down. But that's the game there. I mean, and from Munch's point of view, I think he'd be happy to not concede another another score and, and try and get lose a bonus point. They're not going to work their way up the field unless there's a, a real error by Munch by Connacht. And that's a 50-22, of course. So it will be seven. Okay, time off. Okay, fine. Connacht as well. How many lads? No, I think it's five? a monster throw. I thought, it was a, I, thought he, I thought he called a 50-22, but obviously okay, not. The meters. ball was brought yeah. back in, I Hang think, on. but he was inside his own half. But That's why I wear glasses and you don't. Well, this is all to do now, isn't it, for Munster? Thank you. Just over three minutes, and they're going to be asked to go the length of the field. That's and high, they're high going to struggle with Let's doing that, and that's going to be a penalty as Tierney Martin almost got himself over the line straight away. Angel pushes forward, and Angel scores! Yeah, you just can't win away from home with no line out. And that's the, the icing on the cake for the sports ground. They've been waiting for a win for the last five or six weeks at home here. You see it here, just way too high, and that's going to be a penalty advantage there. So on the advantage, in fairness, it's Anger. He is powerful. He's a good go-to ball carrier for him. Has that weight coming from in behind. You'll see it better in this angle here. So he's the primary ball carrier. You've got Buckley. He's going to latch on. And then he just... Yeah, they just... But it was all too easy in the end, wasn't it? It's a numbers it? game. And yeah, and again, just... That's my probably Munster just lacking That's that it. bit of power just, just red one, late yeah. in the game. And it's no surprise that it player coming off the bench, Anger, he won a scrum penalty for them earlier, and there he has a little bit more juice in his legs to, to get the winning score. Well, Tierney Martin thought he had the try off the back of that line-out. The penalty advantage came, it wasn't needed in the end because Jack Anger has gone across the man he joined from the Leinster Academy in 2020. Has picked up the first and what could be the only try of this match. Hanrahan Looks to add the extras. They're 11 in front. Yep. They're now 13 in front. He makes it 22 points to nine in favour of Connick. And this one now surely is out of sight for the home team. And most disappointingly for Munster is they're not going to pick up a bonus point of any description either. Thank you. So we're away again. With the, just over a minute remaining. It's still in the home side. Coming home with a wet sail, quite literally, in the second half. The wind behind them that picked up just before half time. And they've used it to their advantage with a kicking game of Jack Carty, especially in this second half. Not the best in the first half of their kicks, but they certainly turned all around in the second period. And it's now Munster to try and come up with a consolation towards the end as they try and work it up towards the halfway line and Zebo is going to go to his right and that's shut down straight away. Yeah, no. Nice tackle there by Michael McDonald. That's a rock! Well, they're just going to try and throw everything now, Munster, you would expect. Maybe they could have gone with this a bit earlier. They did have a little bit of joy when they went on that first and second phase, but besides that, it's pretty, pretty much con it, and well, that sums it up, doesn't it? The ball just thrown straight into the hands of the try scorer, Jack Anger, with no one else around, and he just takes the ball forward. It's not on. And then it's knocked on from a <laughs> hurl. Advantage over. Well, we're going from one end to the other, aren't we, at the moment? And that should just about see us through. Put us out as a busy <laughs> referee, <laughs> blow us up, and I'm dry and warm. The quality's been. Hold red. It hasn't, horrendous. it hasn't been the greatest game to watch of rugby that we've ever seen, but it's kept us guessing. Hanrahan realises time, he's been told, he puts it out. The man who's picked up 17 points for Connick in this game.